heshima bwana utukufu ni wako wenye uhai wanne wanakuwa putu akisema mtakatifu ni wewe oh mungu wa mungu ketie mahali pacho We are going to hear the word of God because of time. Battles of destiny. Battles of destiny. That is going to be our sermon briefly. But let me just make a brief prayer. Father in the name of Jesus, I give you praise. I give you honor this morning. Thank you because of the opportunity to be in your house to speak to your people. Lord, I pray that you may anoint my tongue to speak in clarity, to speak in simplicity. to speak with great authority and with finality that comes from your holy spirit for this my prayer in jesus name amen i minister with a church known as a house of refuge evangelistic ministry abbreviated as horeim those of you who are fond of watching mbci tv there's a program that comes every saturday known as ask the ministers of god and uh, by the grace of god my spiritual father is the one who conducts that uh, program he is known as apostle dan gishimu and by the grace of god from this month i will also be ministering in that program in the mbci i'll also be ministering in another one we call light beyond boundaries yeah so we thank god for these opportunities and as time goes by i know when these people will be handing over because they are elderly people when they be handing over to us the people will be whom we will be going to seek so that we can minister together with them it is not the people who are out there they are the people you see seated here so mkucu is not just a, a, a any other christian union this one is an altar which i believe as long as you position yourself the correct way this altar produces generals of the kingdom of god hallelujah and therefore as you come to serve god i'm saying this for the sake of the incoming leaders as you serve god here be encouraged that you're in the right place and you are taking over from the right people in jesus name now battles of destiny it is important to note that destiny is something that you cannot dare to ignore in as far as your life is concerned and because of time i will just define briefly what destiny is i may say destiny it is the purpose why you live it is the reason why currently you are not referred to as the late we are still referring you with your right name because there is a purpose that god expects that you're going to achieve destiny it is god's mission and vision on earth through you it is what god intends to do here on earth through my life and through your life because god is a spirit and therefore he must seek for a physical entity which he is going to use to achieve his purposes here on earth but apparently it happens that there are areas where human beings are fought and defeated it is in this area of destiny there are three areas where human beings are fought three battles in the life of a human being that is the personal battle battles from within yourself sometimes you feel like you want to serve god but there is that discouraging voice that comes not from your friends not from your neighbors it emanates from within you and it discourages you that it is not a person like you who can serve god those are internal battles and at this age those internal battles are rampant you are encompassed but there are still some internal voices speaking from the inside you convincing you that you are not the type of people 
that can lead people in worship. You are not the kind of people that can preach and people give their lives to Jesus. Those are internal battles. And it is my prayer today that God shall release his spirit upon you to be able to overcome all those internal battles in the inside of your spirit. That is the level number one of battles. They are also what we call family battles. Battles from your background. Battles from where you come from. And these are battles which are, you are fought by people whom you know very well. And a good example of a person who underwent serious family battles, it is a man of God known as Joseph. The people who are used of the devil to scheme a lie that Joseph has been killed, they were not his enemies, they were his own brothers. So sometimes, in the course of seeking for your success, in the course of seeking for your, you know, for your identity in Christ, there can come battles from your family members. But it is my prayer today that God shall give you wisdom to know how to handle some of these people who will come seeking to discourage you. Because you cannot disown your father and mother. Neither can you disown your brothers. But sometimes they can be used to make sure that you don't become that which God has called you to become. But it is my prayer today in the name of Jesus Christ that all those family battles which you may be undergoing through, God is going to give you wisdom and to give you grace to be able to overcome them and still to maintain a close relationship with those family members. Hallelujah. The last area where now our sermon is, it is what we call now the battles of destiny. Satan seeks to fight you, not because of anything else, not because you have wronged, not because you have committed any error, but he is in passionate hatred with what he has foreseen that you are going to become in future. Because in as far as destiny is concerned, Satan does not fight you as an individual, my brother and my sister. What Satan does is that Satan fights your rank in the spirit. Satan fights your rank in as far as your destiny is concerned. So that is what Satan has a problem with. So when you see people getting delivered here, do not become a spectator. It is because Satan has identified that their spiritual ranking is too high and therefore he has a battle against their rank. But it is my prayer today in the name of Jesus Christ that as you continue increasing your rank in the Lord, let God also increase his anointing over your life that you may be able to overcome the battles of your spiritual ranking in the name of Jesus Christ. So from today, don't go around saying that Satan is fighting me. He is not fighting you. He is fighting what you represent in the kingdom. That one simply tells you, you are not a common sister in the church. Neither are you a common brother in the church. One thing I refuse, and it is my prayer that my hatred is going to become contagious to all of you. One thing I have refused, my colleague pastors, it is to become a common pastor. That one I have refused. I have refused to become a common evangelist. And I have purpose. The levels I've been reading about in the Bible, the history I've read about Akinabonke, that was during their era. That was their spiritual rank. But I believe there is a rank for me in the Lord. And the same, by extension, there is also your rank in the Lord. Hallelujah. So today, we are trusting God that the battles we have been going through because of our destiny, may God release the grace upon all of us. May God teach our hearts how to do war concerning our destiny. Because if you overcome the enemy in the area of your destiny, you have made it in life. Hallelujah. I want us to, because of time, let's go to the book of Luke chapter 1 verse number 57. Luke chapter 1 verse 57. I hope we have someone to project for us or we use our manual backups. Okay, let me consult my manual backup. Ah, good one. Now, Elizabeth full time, I'm talking about battles of destiny. Now, Elizabeth full time came
came that she should be delivered. In other words, that she may give birth. And she brought forth a son. Proceed. And her neighbors and her cousins. My Bible version talks about neighbors and relatives. But this one specifies the cousins. Meaning you should take care of your cousins. Her cousins had how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her. And they rejoiced with her. Proceed. And it came to pass that on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child. Now, who do you think the Bible is talking about? Which child is this? This is John the Baptist, right? But let's proceed. And they, uh -huh. and it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. They called him Zacharias. Please, would you use the New King James Version? Kindly, if, if it's within your disposal. Because my King James Version has something very important which I don't want to leave out. Let me just read. Uh, from verse 59. So it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child and they would have called him by the name of his father. Thank you, my brother. So it was on the eighth day these neighbors and these relatives came to celebrate and also to witness that this young man has been circumcised as per their culture. But they were also not empty hearted. They came with something. The Bible says they would have called him by the name of his father who? Zacharias. So these guys came with a proposal of a name that apart from him being our relative we also want to give him a name. It is like these guys were not aware that before John has been born, a message had already come from the Lord that this boy, his mandate, his destiny is very specific. His destiny is not like that of his father nor of his mother. His purpose in life is not like of his family members. He is a unique child. We proceed. The next verse. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. So Elizabeth was very keen. All through the verses we have read, we have not seen Elizabeth talking anywhere. She remained quiet. She remained silent. And watched the neighbors and relatives giving a dance. Perhaps they were even giving what we call urinations. Five for the boy. They did all that stuff. And then time came. And I suppose one of the cousins is the one who rose up and said, His name is going to be Zechariah, just like the father. The moment that guy opened his mouth to dare to give John another name, the mother was quickened in the spirit. And it is my prayer today that may God also cause you to have a high level of spiritual sensitivity, to be sharp in the spirit, to discern when people are getting you out of your purpose of life. Hallelujah. She was sensitive in the spirit. She discerned. These guys have come with another name. They are saying that my son will be called Zechariah. And yet, when the angel appeared, he said, his name shall be John. Today I came to declare and to prophesy that in the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any kind of a name you may have been given, which is contrary to what God you has called you to become, we are negating all those words. We are refuting all those words. And we are declaring, I shall only become, and you shall only become that which God has called you to become in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You must be sensitive in the spirit. She had. They came with a proposal. The name of this boy is Zechariah. In other words, what these family members are saying is this. The battles that the Zechariah fought, we are transferring them over through the power of the name. We are transferring those battles over to this boy. 
In other words, they are saying the barrenness and the delays of Zechariah and Elizabeth through the power of the name, we are transferring them over to this boy. But Elizabeth was sharp in the spirit. She is the one who rose and said, enough is enough. That evil family pattern of delay, as far as my son is concerned, we are putting a demarcation. The delays of Zechariah shall not cross over to this son. And I also pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the delays of your father's house and all the oppressions of your father's house, may they not cross over to your generation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be very sensitive about things which people say about you. Even if they are your family members. Be cautious even of the nickname that your people call you. Because it has power. When something else is happening, when Benjamin is being born, you can project for us the book of Genesis uh, 35, verse number 16. I want to show you something very sensitive that sometimes even your closest family members even your beloved boyfriend if you have one or even your girlfriend they can be used of the devil sometimes to kick you out of your purpose in this life then they journeyed from Bethel and when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath Rachel labored in childbirth and she had hard labor. Proceed. Now it came to pass when she was in hard labor, when things were not good, when things were tough on her side, when pain was too much in her heart, she spoke. And what did she say? Okay, these are the middle of speaking. They said, do not fear. You will have this son also proceed. And so it was, as her soul was departing. In other words, as now she is dying because of pain and because of stress, she began to speak words to this small boy that she is giving birth to. And she said, she called his son Ben Oni, meaning the son of pain. And then the Bible adds something immediately after. Rachel called her son the son of, of, of pain. She passed on. Before anything else happened, the husband is the one who came over. And he said, no, you shall not be called Ben-Oni because it means the son of pain. But you shall be called Benjamin. Hallelujah. So the father here was also sensitive and he was a man of the spirit. And I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, the young ladies who are here and are preparing for marriage, may God connect you to a man who is of high spiritual sensitivity that when things are not okay in your family, he will be sensitive in the spirit and he is going to speak as a prophet of your house. Hallelujah. The husband is the one who spoke and said, No, you cannot be called the son of pain. You shall be called Benjamin. Those of you who have gone to Bible school, I believe you know, Paul the apostle of Jesus, Paul the, the greatest author of the Bible expression in the New Testament, he was from this tribe of the Benjamites. Meaning Satan had already foreseen that we are going to cast the destiny of this young boy by calling him the son of pain so that all the generations that are going to be birthed through the channel of this son of pain. All of them are going to be people that are full of pain. But there came a man and he said, no, you cannot be called Ben-Oni, you shall be called Benjamin. It is my prayer today, in the name of Jesus Christ, may God open your spiritual understanding and your spiritual eyes and begin to see the areas where Satan has been attacking you. Hallelujah. Ladies who are here, I am trusting God that none of you has got calling to celibacy. That is the calling not to get married anyway. I believe none of you here has a calling to become a nun. Meaning, one day you will find yourself in, it, in such a level. Be 
cautious and extremely cautious of the words you will speak during labor pains. Because they may have a lot of implications. They may introduce a lot of battles to that child whom you will give birth to. Mom Faith here is a doctor, so I believe she knows and she can tell you that giving birth is not a walk in the park. It is not bread and butter. Brethren who are here, respect women. Hallelujah. Now, there are three sources because of time where you can be fought from. And I have said, Satan will not be fighting you as an individual. He has a problem with your rank. Like now he had a problem, and a serious problem with the rank of John the Baptist. He knew this is a forerunner of the Messiah who is coming. Therefore, let me convince the neighbors and the relatives to call him the name of the father, Zechariah, because it carries with, with it some spirit of delay. Remember, Zechariah and Elizabeth had taken prolonged time to give birth. So if the boy was given the name of the father, there was to be an immediate transfer. And it is my prayer that in the name of Jesus Christ, may you never become like the person you are named after, especially if there are people that are not born again. Hallelujah. One thing I said is that I shall not become like the people I am named after. Why? I did a research and discovered all of them never died a natural death. They died an untimely death. And most of them were killed because of blood issues. And therefore I said, I shall not become like this man I am named after. That could you name. Now, there are areas where Satan can fight you. Area number one. It is what we call the crowd factor. The crowd factor. The crowd factor. Crowd ni kama vile muko. Umati wa watu. We are talking about battles of destiny. And we have looked at how they can come even from people. Whom. Let me tell you something. Guys. The people to cause you to mess up. If you are born again Christian. The young men who will cause you to fall in fornication. They are not in club image. They are not anywhere in Kiandutu. They are right here. Because Satan will introduce, when Satan wants to destroy your destiny, he will not introduce a demon. He will introduce a man who has a demon. Hallelujah. And that man may come in a serious suit. Speaking in other tongues. He will not always come with ragged, and I have no problem with ragged trousers anyway. He must not come wearing ragged trousers. He must not come speaking the language of the heathens. He may come speaking the language of heaven. Now, ongea vitu nyororo nyororo. Naza kukushika shika. Ii ukona nyewele tamu. Ni God. God ya wapi. Unaelekea kumarizoa. The crowd factor. Because of time, we may not read, but we are just project Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 14. Uh, verse 1 to 4. It's about a man whom we all know. Luke chapter 19. The, 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 the rich man who was a tax collector. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Proceed. And what happened? <laughs> there was, now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was not just a man but was a chief tax collector and he was rich the next verse and he sought to see who Jesus was meaning this rich man has got a vision has got a desire that I want to see Jesus and not just seeing but having an encounter with Jesus but there was a problem. But he could not because of the crowd. For he was of short stature. 
before we get to the hey, before we get to the area of being of a short stature we are at the first point of because of the crowd as you continue in the pursuit of your destiny some of the battles which will be launched against you they may come from the crowd and the crowd is not a good thing crowd is a typology of the many scenes which may be hiding in the deepest part, part of your heart this crowd is a typology of the very many uh, unforgiveness cases that are filled in your heart some young ladies are unable to move towards their destiny because she was heartbroken that's a crowd in her life she cannot get to her destiny because there is a between her and her destiny there is a big crowd of heartbreaks pastor me i want you to pray for me to be filled in tongues we don't receive the Holy Spirit with a full face. Just relax. I've gone to schools and you are praying for students. You are praying for students. You are praying for students. I was class 4. We were playing games. 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 And I know the same could be happening here. You are in campus, second year, that year, but you are still holding on to your high school, I uh, know, uh, what is this called? Uh, primary school boyfriend. You are always cursing the guy. By fire, Akuna fire in the Akuna. Release the guy. Let the guy make progress. Follow Christ. Be passionate about your destiny. Care less about the crowd. Hallelujah. So from today, I beseech you by the masses of God, learn to let go of bitterness and malice from your heart. Learn to release. Don't be a person who carries a lot of baggages in your heart. You know very well that right from the time you did your KCPE, Kenya certificate of pencil events. You are desire. You are desire <laughs> was to become a high school teacher. Then you went to high school. I didn't form four. When you are just one week to start in KCSE, a teacher gave you two strokes of the cane. Ukachukia uwalimu kabisa. Ukakuja hapa ukafanya. You brought confusion here. You went to the school of hospitality. You're always doing supplementaries. Because Part of your destiny was to become a teacher. Lakini juri kasirika na huwezi samehea. Ukaenda huko. That's why there's confusion in your life. Learn to release. So that is number one. Crowd represents a lot of sin. Starting between you and your destiny. Sin can introduce an adding pathos. Learn to be a person. Some people today are very good in worship and in praise and in giving. They have no problem with all that. But just there, tell them to repent. Munakosana. Or even tell them to go before God and seek for forgiveness. Hawana statement. Lakini muambia obe pesa. And I'll get tongues. Uja wa iskia tawe mwenyewe. Zigine kari, zile deep, concentrated tongues. Muambia repent. Hawezi. Today, the Lord is addressing that area of your life where it's like you, it's like, it's like you have taken the form of Zac, uh, this man called Zacchaeus you want to see Jesus you want to get to your destiny but there are a lot of sin I want to charge you today my brothers and my sisters sin is not oxygen as you move round and round sleeping about with any man or in a woman thinking that everybody else is doing it I want to assure you there are some young men of substance and some young women of substance who have purpose in their heart 
they shall not defile themselves. They shall keep on waiting upon the Lord. And it is my prayer. May God empower such for his own glory in Jesus' name. Don't be cheated. Simply because you are seeing it on social media. Everybody is into fornication. As you are doing that, other people are investing quality time tapping into power. Hallelujah. We should be challenged. Some of these men of God you see here, as time is going by, the Lord is going to position them to greater places. But, who is going to fill in that vacuum? If it is not you. I know there are some first years who are here. Let me tell you first years. Do not conduct Bible study with the devil. Don't hold an internal debate session with the devil. Maybe in your high school you are a very good debater. You used to question everything. In this kingdom we don't. You know, our God is a dictator. You either take it as it is or you leave it. If it is righteousness, you either become righteous or mabuzonge, jehanamu. So don't be cheated by those who are in second year or even in third year or fourth year or whatever. A guy has ran away from the hostel where the parent paid. Now he has gone to Keganjo and is cohabiting with a girl and you now want to emulate. May God punish the devil. May God punish that devil. Do not be cheated. The crowd. And to that point, which crowd factor do you think is there in your life? Which has been causing, we will pray for you even today. But as long as you are not addressing those sinful areas of your life, at the next time, tukikuja, tutakuombea tena. Even if we, we call Ben Hin here, atakuombea leo na kesho, uko uko uto. You have to make a personal resolution that you are going to change. For he was of short stature. That's another area. Sp spiritual shortness. I find it funny, the incoming coordinator, that we have a brother who can feed from December 1 to, this, to, to January 1. Karada Musima, he does not skip any meal for spiritual reasons. He doesn't. Ata kiko jeka anafia kachakula sawa sawa. He doesn't. Na utampata si yu, akishtua wadugu, ataka kuwa Apostle Joshua Selman, some years to come. Na jama anafia kachakula vibaya. There is something about power and serious prayer and fasting. Those two things are inseparable. You cannot be a lover of power and a lover of food at the same time. Hazi pelekanagi, na mimi semi watu wa sikule, but please boost your spirit man. Increase your spiritual height. When you put a matatu, masiga, where do you come from? Yes, masiga. I've seen him somewhere. Yes, you come from Book, oh, Nairobi. But the interiors, Kakamega. I don't see how Masiga can board a bus from Nairobi to Kakamega and you don't at least witness Christ to the person next to you. At least to Mubirie. See you shout, Mubirie, you get on the name of Christ. But there are some guys giving the pastor here and the mission coordinator sleepless nights a pair of chance mission. And I mean, it doesn't work that way sometimes. Address that short area of your life. Zacchaeus was a short man. So that area where you are short, could it be that you are a good brother, powerful, full of the Holy Spirit, but in as far as morality is concerned, you are short. If you can remember, say of control. And it is my prayer that in this congregation, 
May the Lord raise young men and women who are going to develop ability to say no, especially to sin. Hallelujah. So that the labor that was labored by these leaders who went ahead of us, it is very painful when some of these people come and they discern in this you. Because they can tell. They can tell. I tell you, when you go to a place where there is environment, you don't have to be to, to, uh, you don't have to wait for a prophet to prophesy. Spiritually, you're able to design. Anyway, because of time, let us not talk too much about that. Another area where battles can come from. I know you want to go for lunch. This is what we call spiritual vagabondism. Being a spiritual vagabond. Vagabond simply means a person without a home. Where you katua po katikati. Unambele wala nyuma. There is just project for us, please. Luke chapter 10 from verse 30. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man, the guy is not even being defined who he was. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. If the Bible is yours, Adeline went down. A certain man went down from Jerusalem, the house of bread, to Jericho, where the walls used to collapse. And the water used to be bitter. And fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Very many things are happening there. Don't even proceed to the next verse. There was a certain man, and it's like he didn't have a home. Because he had just come from Jericho, no, from Jerusalem, and is now loitering aimlessly, heading to Jericho. This guy was not an evangelist. He was not a missionary. He was just a guy walking aimlessly. It is dangerous to just walk around without an assignment. The same habit which fell upon this man is what came upon King David. One time his men of war have gone for battle and the guys are at the rooftop just walking aimlessly, loitering around the rooftop and there the Bible says he saw Bathsheba. When you are just wasting your time, your spiritual time, you are not in prayer, you are not in the word, you are not in meditation, you are just there. That is how you start the process of going down. The Bible says, a certain man went down from Jericho, from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jerusalem is the house of bread. So he is leaving a blessed city and is now heading to Jericho. Immediately after leaving the walls of Jerusalem, at a couple of weeks Jericho, he fell among thieves. And I know today some of us in the course of pursuing your destiny you may have found yourself a kind of what I call a spiritual vagabond. You are just strolling around. And that is why in most cases I always advise people even when I was in the regime my advice used to be one when you are in the university fellowship here in the CU when you are at home fellowship there at home have a father whom you can submit to there are battles of fathers and there are battles of sons and the problem why many people when they come to campus you find them being spiritual vagabonds today wako in CU next Sunday kanisa ingine pale iyo Sunday ingine wako kanisa ingine by the time they are clearing campus, the guy is spiritually confused and contaminated. He has no stand. He is neither here nor there. If you want to get to your destiny, 
And if you want to overcome the battles of destiny, learn to submit under an authority. Hallelujah. How many still love me this afternoon? Learn to submit under a grace. Your pastor may not be the good, you know, twanging pastor you watch on TV. But that man or that woman of God understands the nature of your destiny. Learn to honor him. Don't just walk around. The moment this guy left the abode of Jerusalem, the first thing which happened, and I know it may have happened to some of us here, he fell among thieves. What did they do? Thieves represent Satan who streamed, who stripped him of his clothing. Now, the moment you fall on the hands of the devil, he does not start with beating you and bruising you. He starts by introducing shame in your life. And then that shame will wound you. And it will leave you half dead. That is why you have heard some people and I must say this anyway. They've been very good here in praise and worship, even at home, very committed, but sinning secretly. Meaning they have left Jerusalem, the place of salvation, the place of conquering the battles of destiny, and they have fell on the hearts of the destroyer, who is Satan. And they continue in sin secretly. Sin has got an enticing nature, very enjoying nature, a soothing nature, a sugar-coating nature. Who you pastor wenu? Wewe fanya dhambi. Who you pastor wenu hata haonyesha agui? Hata ukilala kwa mweni. Now, okay, I'm, I'm, I have nothing against mweni is here. Hata ukilala kwa mweni. Na ukuche ushike Mike Sande. Pastor Ambani hata nakujaka aliza hakiwa leta. Hata onyeshwa. Neto na hala hapa Biafra. Nakuja hapa kuruka ruka. It appears nice. It's like, you know, let us not be people that are playing hide and seek with this thief. Because the next thing he'll do, he'll make sure he holds your leg firmly so that you don't become that which God has called you to become. But it is my prayer today that in the name of Jesus Christ, let God arise. Let God expose all the areas where the enemy has taken hold over your life. And may he give you the grace. I came to encourage you that all is not lost. There is a hope. There is still a point of comeback. Hallelujah. There's a point of come. Come back. Satan strips you. What, what is the process of stripping? Like stripping the kutoa guo. Pastor Kabada si muna mujua eh. Sarifanya wedding 2020 eh. Na tukaenda kama watu wasi you eh. Na tukampea gift eh. Guess what? Alishiko wa mchana peupe. Alishiko wa hivi. Hapa, hapa veka. Hapa luwabo. Luwabo club. Jamari kuwa mekunyu wa chakari. When you hear such has happened to me, don't be shocked. I started the process of moving from Jerusalem a long time ago. Nivira hamujawa ijua. Diosaizi muna nijua. Before you are exposed, my brother, my sister, before you are stripped, why don't you just take a strong farm and then take a U turn and go back to Jerusalem? Don't wait to be ashamed. Don't wait to be frustrated. Don't wait to conceive his pregnancy. Do to Jew, you messed up. Turn back. The only problem with me is that I am an evangelist. So at some time I must speak as it is. Because after all is said and done, after all these degrees have been achieved by you, what will come after that? Is judgment. You went and studied. Judgment is waiting. Stripped. Is there an area of your life where you are already stripped? Another way, I'm finishing Pasi. Another way of knowing there's an area of your life where you have been stripped of. It is that area 
where you have got an irresistible desire ile ile amesha kwa nasikiaga hata ukitemtiwa huwezi sema hapana that is an area ulishavuliwa nguo kitambo and that is the area the enemy will use to shame you if it is an area of issues of drugs naona kalori ya taska ikipita hivi unaanza kusikia mate imejaa kwa mdomo that is an area you are stripped and you must if today you discover i am stripped as my good brother and as my good sister don't be the number one guy to go and call other people to see pastor kapata naked be the number one comforter come and cover me come and do what come and cover me covering me does not mean you come and encourage me in my wickedness covering me simply means you come and assist me know the area i have messed up show me with love rebuke me with love then cover me with the love of jesus christ with that you have won it so from today let the mku church be a church that knows how to cover up for one another with this strictness but with love the pastor who is taking over don't shy off from summoning brothers and sisters to the office rebuke them with love point out to the areas they have messed up cover them up ile siku atakuja kuanikwa they will never blame you as their pastor because you have played your part and i believe the same was done by those who those of us who have come before you that's what we did we did our part those who got exposed we shall never be asked if they never achieve their destiny the next thing after being stripped unaacha ukiwa uchi wounded today many people are unable to achieve their destiny because they are wounded in their hearts you went around messing up and you got wounded but the good thing is there is still a point of comeback the blood of jesus has not lost its healing virtue it is still can heal you it is still can give you a point of return this man was wounded and then after all that the guy was left there departed aliachwa and i know today this service there may be some young men and some young women that are feeling rejected feeling hated we came to remind you even though your boyfriend may have come to a point of rejecting you or even the people that were facilitating your academics they gave up on you there is still one who has not given up on you there is still one who has got a future for you there is still one who is still calling you back home hallelujah towards the end of all that many people came and passed that young man there the last one to come was the good samaritan the good samaritan is a, is an epitome of jesus christ how he comes and collects you and heals you and gives you the zeal and the energy to move to your destiny i came to tell you sin and offenses and the heartbreaks should not cause you not to achieve your destiny they shouldn't let us be upstanding i want us to finish the silence in this place is a little bit horrifying way ebu weka hii to some this water ezekiel 19 verse 9 i will not even proceed <laughs> time is gone Ezekiel 19 verse 9 <laughs> Try just to save time please We are talking about battles of destiny The crowd factor Nimeongelea kuihusu Which crowd is there in your life I said Ezekiel 19 verse 9 The crowd factor Crowd ni umati wa watu 
Zacchaeus, after discovering he is short, and he has also a crowd, he ran and described a sycamore tree. In MKU, we don't have sycamore trees here, but we have one tree called Jesus Christ. Ukipada ju, utamupata hapo. We have one tree, the tree of surrender. You surrender yourself to God and he is going to handle you. The last one that causes people not to get to their destiny is what we call the caging force. You don't get to your destiny because there is a force of caging that attacked you. The Bible says they put him I believe this is not the first time I'm talking about this here. They put him in a cage with the chains and they brought him to the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon there represents Satan. They brought him in nets. So that his voice should no longer be heard on the mountains of Israel. This is a prophet of God. He is on his prophetic assignment. He is an oracle of God. A mouthpiece of God. But there arose some guys that were jealous. Some people that had mad hatred towards what the guy is doing. They arrested him. Put him in a cage. With the chains on his hands and legs. And then they took him to the king of Babylon. In other words, they took him to the inner core where Satan operates. The main reason being so that his voice shall never be heard again on the mountain of Israel. But today I declare as a servant of God, let God arise. May your voice always be heard on the mountain of MKU. Today I declare, may your voice be heard. Those of you who are musicians and ministers of the gospel, may your voice be heard in the mountains of Kenya. May your voice be heard. Those who are in business, in that mountain of business, let your voice be heard in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mountain of education, you came here to be heard. So if there are enemies attacking you from your village, so that the good news of your progress shall never be heard there. Today, God has given you power to be heard. Hallelujah. Because of time, I will not move beyond there. But I want to ask, do we have any person in this, in this congregation who is not born again. You know very well, you have never come to a point of giving your life to Jesus Christ. And you are smiling at me very well, thinking that all is well. May I discourage you as an evangelist, all is not well without Jesus. Are you there? You may have backslidden. I am inviting you today to pray for you that you may receive Jesus before I call a uh, pastor to come and conclude the service for us. Anybody who is not born again, if I don't ask that, of course I know people are used to songs, keyboard, for them to receive Jesus. But I always say, nobody will be received in hell with a worship song. There's no prison worship department in hell. In hell there is gnashing of teeth. Karibu jehana mu karibu wewe hiyo hutawai isikia huko kama kama wataenda so anybody anybody who is not born again aya you are there you have heard about the gospel there are some areas you know in your life mambo umefinyika sawa sawa and you would want that god may empower you i want to call you here and then i'll call pastor and he is going to pray for you the areas in your life the area of the of the crowd there are some areas unajua dhambi zako zikipanga online hivi zinakuzuia hawezi fikia destiny yako and you may want pastor to pray for you that god may give you the grace i want to welcome you here those who want to be prayed for as i request uh, pastor ambani to 
No, Pastor, you just remain there. Let me call Pastor, our, our incoming associate pastor. Today's a day for the associates. Let me call our incoming associate pastor to pray for our brethren. Is he around? You are there. And you know very well. Someone maybe can try to call him or if he's not around. We do not want maybe to breach the protocol, but there's no problem. I think for the interest of time, Pastor Ambani will just come in. Those who know very well, in as far as your destiny is concerned, the crowd in your life, the bitterness, and the very many things which we do not know, but you know, you require an empowerment and grace to continue. I am thanking God because. <laughs>